The first sentence that we're going to deal with is just three words. I'm going to give you a Spanish accent here, or specifically Argentinian Spanish, and we're going to say it's very difficult with our best Spanish accents. I don't know if you imagine what it would sound like. It might sound like your accent, even if you're not from a Spanish-speaking country. I did have some videos to share with you. I'll share a short anecdote with you guys that, is anyone familiar with Carlos Tevez? A couple people, all right. Well, Tevez is a, he's an Argentinian footballer, soccer player. He's played in the UK for a little while, and he's notably horrible at English. And he's just, just the worst. And, and, and you know, self-proclaimed, uh, he's very, I, I don't know if he's proud of it, but he's definitely not working too hard. I don't know if he has to. But the one video that became quite viral was uh, an interview after a, a match where they'd asked him some really intensive questions, really silly questions, you know. Every answer was, It's very difficult, it's very difficult. It's very difficult, no? Very difficult to go to Manchester. Very difficult for me. No, to, to leave Manchester is very difficult. Uh, for me, it's very difficult. And... Uh, very difficult. And they even, there was even one question where it's like, this is an easy question here, this is an easy question, you know, and, and the answer, of course, was just, it's very difficult. <laughs> it's very difficult. It's very difficult. Can you hear the difference? It's very difficult. It's not very difficult to hear the difference. It's very difficult. What stands out to you? If we had to look at it, look at the sentence and analyze what's happening. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. The first word, it's, 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 e depending on where you're coming from in the Spanish-speaking world, it might be um, a combination. I'm, I'm writing these, by the way, in American English, English uh, kind of like a phonetic writing, so double E is going to be E. Is. Is very difficult. Is very difficult. You might say the same thing in your accent again. This I pronunciation in English is, is not E. Maybe you knew that. No, I is not E. The idea that the letter I is E is a habit. Th things that we're, we're kind of ingrained to learn and to know because that's the case in many languages. But in English, it, it becomes more open, a little more neutral, and it's is what comes out. I don't know why the is thing, the it's and is variation, of course, is uh, maybe something, some, something you're very familiar with, the idea that it's and is, from Spanish speakers, as well as many others, is confused in English. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's very difficult, it's very difficult. But it's, uh, just this one word can be a marker of a foreigner, it can be a marker of a Spanish speaker, and if you're learning English from Spanish, you might realize that that's a word that we want to change. Slightly, it's. Uh, the word very, 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 very difficult. Very, very. I'm also doing, I put the CE in parentheses here because uh, in certain Spanish uh, accents, certain dialects, you'll see the S sound uh, aspirated before uh, another consonant. So. Because the S here is coming before a V, you'll hear this as more of a breath than an S. Ich werde, ich. It almost sounds like a German word here, right? Ich werde difficult. You can mix all the languages at the polyglot gathering. We can mix all of them together. Ich werde difficult. Uh, the word very, as well, stands out to me. In, in, uh, wait for this. The, 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 the very, 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 very. All right, you repeat these over and over and try to get the difference between very and very. Uh, notably, the R and the V and the E are, are kind of a factor here. The Y is fine, though. Everything's fine with the Y. But the, the, the very word is something we want to pay t attention to, right? It's, it shows us, if we're learning Spanish, that the Vs are not Vs. Exactly, right? Again, depending on where you, where you live. That the Rs are not Rs. And again, that's a pretty common thing in, in many other languages. But that we need to make a small change, if that's how we're saying that word. Y very, very, y very cool, y very difficult, very easy. Uh, paying attention to these. I read this as very, again, if you speak English naturally and quickly, that D sounds like a Spanish R. It's crazy, right? Uh, there's, like, there's so many of these connections within the language and within the spelling that, is, that are maybe either unknown or unclear. Maybe you think it, but you're not confident enough to try that, um, I say go for it. Try it out. Use, you know, listen, use those listening skills to actually try to figure out what's best for you, how it connects to your language uh, natively. And, and spelling changes are huge. Writing it out like this for a native English speaker, Beatty, Beatty, if they're saying, well, I guess if they're, this is not a Spanish example, but if they're speaking Spanish, you can hear that, that flipped flipped R in the D between vowels. We also do that with T's. We'll see other examples here. 
And then the word difficult. Difficult, difficult, difficult. Because it depends on your level or your, your desire to, to match the accent. But the first D is what I'm really focusing on here, is the D. D. I'm going to write this whole thing out. As V, bear with me here, Fi and Kul, you can't really change the spelling. I can only use English here for the, uh, for the purpose of uh, you know, making it a little bit simpler from, from English. But difficult, difficult. You can feel free to say these things out loud under your breath to your partner. It's, uh, it's a talk, but you can, you, can, you can talk too. You can practice these things. It's very, very important to listen, but also important to, to speak. So, is very difficult. Is very difficult. If you don't know any Spanish and you want to just imitate a Spanish accent, but you speak English well enough to read that bottom line, it's no very difficult. <laughs> you can do it. All right, so I'm going to write this up in an, in an IPA that I kind of made up a little bit. I aspirated an I, an E here. I don't think you can do that. So E, that funny looking B, if you're not familiar, is this uh, bilabial fricative. It's a V, V, I very, I very difficult. Don't make a V sound. That'll, that's a dead giveaway. Uh, a hard B is okay. It's very, very difficult. It's okay. Very, and then V, we use this uh, interdental uh, fricative, difficult. Because that's, a, again, a sound. You can, of course, look up the phonetics and the phonology of, of the target language, but that's always like you know, the first page of the book that you skip or the, you know, the section that nobody really wants to learn. In fact, it's really hard to learn, but we're, we're working with the tools that we have. And, um, and just listening to other people can, can, can do the trick as well. Very difficult. Here, this is something that I, I use in, the, um, in, in lessons and in sessions with people who are trying to change an accent. We mentioned before that spelling can be really misleading, but it can also be really helpful and really um, a, a tool if you understand how those sounds are actually created and actually pronounced in those languages. So this is a word in English. It's not written in English, but it's, if, you, if you pronounce it, it's actually an English word. So this is the kind of thing what I would do for a Spanish speaker who is trying to master, uh, in this case, American English. I would spell it for them in their native spelling. This is the orthography spelling of, of Spanish. Try to sound it out. How would you say this word in Spanish? And what word do you think this is in English? Comedy. I heard, Cam I heard Toyota Camry. It looks like that. Don't be, again, this is, a, this is a, a challenge. Don't be misled by the spelling. Although there's a C, there's an M, there's an E. The accent is for stress, not for length or anything like that. Ka, kame, comedy, comedy. And yeah, it gives us the word comedy. Quite close, not, maybe not exact, of course. But man, if they're saying comedy, I'm, I'm very much into comedy. Comedy. It changes the whole, whole accent. It changes the whole identity of somebody if they change the O to an A. And if they flip that D in English, that, that sounds a little bit more like a Spanish R. So using that as a tool to someone could just change their whole approach to the language. This is, this is huge. This has been by far the best, most efficient way of sharing uh, pronunciation changes is by spelling it in someone's native language with their native spelling rules. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable, and hopefully uh, you can learn from this too. Another one, just for fun. The J is an H in Spanish. Yeah, we're getting easier and better and better this. Hospital, hospital. This one is a little bit, uh, you know, more of a stretch, but just kind of proves this point. The O again, changing to an A. Using a J, why not? You might get a, 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 a harsh ha, hospital. And the OL thing it might be a little bit harder, but definitely something that we want to address. Hospital, hospital. It gives them a, definitely a push in the right direction. Um, a couple ones from English to Spanish. I'm not sure if you guys know this, but uh, English speakers when speaking Spanish also have similar problems with pronunciation. Can you believe it? How does an how does a English speaker pronounce the number three in Spanish? Trace, I heard it. <laughs> Uno, dos, trace. We love it. We're so proud of our trace, right? It's so it's, it's fantastic. Trace, like you trace your hand on a piece of paper. And that's a habit, I will admit. We all do it. Well, not we, but they. No, I'm kidding. Uh, once you learn this, this uh, trick, I call it, it, it changes the whole game. If you just use the English word today, 
today, say it quickly, say it naturally. Don't pronounce the D too much. Today, 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 today's, today's. You do have to de-voice the S. Right, it's a today's with a Z in English, but it would be more of a C-E or a. Today's, today's, today's Thursday, today's. Uno, dos, today's. All right, so if you have no idea how to flip an R, this of course works for many languages, right? Just use that TD combination. In English, especially North American English, this works like a charm. It's fantastic. Uh, another one here, this is my favorite one. I made a video about this on YouTube, you can check this out. How to pronounce the capital of Argentina with just four English words. Could you guess what they are? I won't make a guess. Here they are. Way, no, Side, again, this D is valuable. Accent on the side, ace. You can explain it, what's going on here? Buenos Aires, Buenos Aires. Vamos a Buenos Aires. Che, viví en Buenos Aires. Y nada, se me pegó el acento porteño al toque, viste? Eh, Buenos Aires, Buenos Aires. I'm not saying that you have to say Buenos Aires when you're talking to somebody in English. You can just say your normal Buenos Aires, or Buenos, I'm not sure how the, if there's a standard way of pronouncing that city, but that's a way to change the game for, uh, for many English speakers. I'm going to do one in, uh, or two in Portuguese if we have time. This is from Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese in particular. If you know nothing about it, we're going to get into it right here. Same exact sentence, just to have that kind of, uh, you know, consistency. Um, what you notice about this, the same thing happens with E. The I becomes an E sound, but they don't really have this uh, voiceless S. Portuguese has a Z sound, unlike Spanish. So they'll probably replace it more with a Z. E's, and mostly because the next sound coming is a V, which is also voiced. So they're going to anticipate this voicing, and that's something we take notes on. <laughs> voiced sounds anticipate voiced sounds. If you're not to that point in language studies, that's okay. But it's still very valuable. The very doesn't change much. I noticed Portuguese speakers say, uh, I'll do the accent a few times so you can hear it. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. If you don't know the Brazilian accent, for me, can, I can do it for you a little, little, little bit. I live in Brazil for, for nine months, okay? And the people don't know exactly what that Brazilian accent sounds like. For, for, for me, it's not a very popular accent, but uh, can't tell. Eh, normal. <laughs> okay. It's very difficult. For me, eh, can't tell. So very sounds kind of similar. I don't really notice a big change, and so I move past it. Uh, but the word gifico does stand out. This is important too, way different than Spanish. The G sound, if you don't know Portuguese, D-I, it must, if we're just learning from this analysis, must be a G sound, G, uh, just like here, G-E-E, -E, or J-E-E. -E. Gifi, again, same I kind of change from I to E. And then that last thing, co, truly stands out. I know that there's a final T, a final L. They've completely ignored those letters, and I wonder why. So I kind of look into that thing, uh, that um, aspect of Portuguese to see what's going on with a final L. We'll find later that an L in Portuguese is just like an U sound. Gifico, gifico. Uh, it might even shorten because of rhythmic properties. A Portuguese speaker might say, gifico. He's very gifico. Eh, gifico. Okay. Eh, gifico. Again, if you have no idea what the Brazilian accent sounds like, and you're just like, this guy's, I guess, I trust him, I don't know. He's deceived me before with accents, but I, I suppose we can believe it. He's very jifko. Co, use that diphthong as well. Um, one last one in Portuguese, from Portuguese to English, uh, is the sentence, I sent an email to them. I sent an email to them. I chose this also and even changed the word order. You might notice that it kind of sounds more natural in English to say, I sent them an email. We would do that more often. So this is a, a kind of a word choice thing that I would hear a lot from Portuguese speakers, and I'll also note that. But uh, for now, the pronunciation, put it all on the table here. All right, this one you can repeat with me, right? <laughs> I, <laughs> I Santa, it's almost like you're taking a pledge at Santa Claus. I Santa, ni meio, chudeng. Okay, now you're Brazil. Now you have a Brazil accent. I Santa. Nimeo chuden. I sent an email chuden. <laughs> Sounds kind of ridiculous. But the most important things here, okay, the ENT. If you know about anything about Portuguese, they have nasalized vowels. And especially a vowel before an N will be super tricky, especially EN. They'll often uh, confuse 
E-N and A-N. So send and sand sound identical. They both sound like the A eh version, sand. I santa, ni mail, word stress here. We say email, we stress the E to distinguish it from regular mail. Uh, but, but Portuguese speakers stress the mail, email. Mail, same idea with this final L being an O, an U sound. And finally, true, O. Oh. I don't even know where this comes from, but when Portuguese speakers speak English, the word to, to is always chu, even if it's slightly chu dang, chu, chu, chu me. Uh, and then the, the final thing here, really of note, is this them. TH sound uh, closing turns into a D, hard D, normal English D. And the A N G spelling here in English is pronounced ang, uh, dang. And I hear Portuguese speakers will say to them, but their lips won't close. Like we do with M's, you know, true dang. And I'm like, you know, like, you know, just mm, them, them. But it's, like you have to go back and say, well, this must be a Portuguese thing. It must be something that they have. And surely it is, right? Uh, an E-M in Portuguese sounds more like that A-N-G in English. True dang. Okay. Okay. Um, so I want to open this up to you guys, too. I want to share with you a few links here that uh, might be useful. But there are... Many sites, the first three here, uh, link your language and name that language. In fact, I think the first three, Language Squad, they're all websites where they've uploaded either snippets, like audio snippets, 20-second uh, um, you know, audios of a certain language, and then they have like multiple choice, you have to guess, is this Korean or is this German? And you know, it starts off easy like that, and then it gets into like really specific ones. Is this Punjab or Tamil? And you're like, I don't know. Uh, they even have uh, some uh, alphabets. You can guess what alphabet uh, or which script is, is uh, being shown. The last two, the Speech Accent Archive, if you uh, can imagine, I spent a lot of time on this website. This is a, a compilation of volunteers who have recorded their voice reading the same paragraph. And uh, they've kind of written down where they're what their native language is, their age, their gender, and you can go in and listen. If you really want to study an accent, I really suggest this. If you're, if you're learning a, a target language and know nothing about the phonology or the, the system of sounds, listen to someone, at least in English, uh, speak with an accent. What do you notice? What, what are you listening for? And, and all the information is there for you, so you're not, you're not guessing where they're from. Uh, and finally, there is a, a link here to a, a game uh, called Guess the Accent. This is just a BuzzFeed quiz, it plays an audio, and you have to guess where that accent is from. They're all very, very fun uh, games to play for entertainment. They're also really good learning tools if you're a teacher or if you're trying to work in pronunciation to your lessons. It's a huge advantage to have access to lots of these uh, recordings, and these websites will help you a ton with that. But overall, I just want you guys to feel the sense of confidence, right? If you, if you can tap into the pronunciation, tap into certain accents, really listen clearly, listen closely to some differences, it changes the way you feel about the conversation. When you, when you create a, a positive first impression in this language and, and people don't realize you're from where you're from or they just kind of second guess it, they're like, I'm not sure where you're from. Isn't that the best feeling in the world? It's like, I fooled you, or I like, it's the, the whole idea, I felt that a few moments ago, right? Uh, the idea that someone thinks you're from somewhere else is just a testament to the, the way that you sound, the way that you carry yourself, again, not just sounds, but word choice, body language, a whole thing. And always remember, like I always say, accents speak louder than words. But that is mostly what I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for joining. So thank you so much for watching. I look forward to being in touch with you guys and set up a free consultation if you'd like. I can't wait to work with you and I'll see you guys soon.